Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Amanda and today I'm going to be reviewing a book which I don't think I've done on my channel or if I have I haven't done in a very very long time. So yeah I'm gonna be talking about Assassin's Blade by Sarah J Maas. I have decided to reread the series in anticipation of Kingdom of Ash coming out in October. Um, the World of Throne of Glass I think is the name of the, the club. It's like a fan page. Um, they're doing a whole read-along from now until October when the book comes out. I'll leave their page linked in the description if you're interested in following along. But I really like the Throne of Glass series. I've only read it once and I kind of rushed through the books. So I thought I'd reread them in anticipation of the last book coming out. And I thought I'd start in chronological order. Um, this is the set of short stories, uh, so I guess it's a novella or I, I don't know what you call it, I guess just a set of, of short stories. Um, there are five short stories and they all cover Selena's past right before the events of uh, Throne of Glass. So I'm going to be talking about my thoughts on this. Obviously this is going to be a spoilery review because you kind of have to have read some of the other books in order to really appreciate some of the stuff that's happened and happens in this book um and otherwise like the review would be really really short <laughs> so yeah so that's your warning this is gonna contain spoilers um and then yeah let's just get right into it so the first short story is the assassin and the pirate lord and they're all titled like that it's all like the assassin and the I'm looking through to see. So it's all, you can't see because it's blinding. Um, but it's the Assassin and the Pirate Lord, the Assassin and the Healer, uh, the Assassin and the Desert, the Assassin and the Underworld, and the Assassin and the Empire. So like I said, there are five stories. Um, the first which is, the first of which is uh, Selena and Sam, who's another assassin, uh, go to this pirate lord and there's an adventure there um, and that's where everything kicks off and then all of the other stories are following events um so yeah uh it's i i was kind of confused when i was reading it because there are a lot of references in um and the different stories to things that happened in the other stories. And I was like, that's a little weird. But then I was reading the acknowledgments at the end, and it turns out all of these were ebooks before they became a collection. So that made a little bit more sense because it's like something that happens in like the assassin and the desert um, is referenced in the assassin and the empire. And it's like, that's weird that you'd call that back when it was just a couple of chapters ago and it's like, oh no, wait, these were all released individually before. Um, so that's like kind of something that I thought was a little weird when reading it, but makes sense when you realize that they weren't all a collection before. Um, but The Assassin and the Pirate Lord is Selena and Sam and a Pirate Lord, um, Rolf, who is a character that we do meet later in the series. Um, but this is their first interaction and it's uh I thought it was a pretty good story. I actually think like it might be my favorite in terms of just a standalone. Uh I think it's probably the best one that's a standalone, uh if that makes sense. Like the other ones I feel like they have a lot more meaning when you realize how they're connected to the overall story. Um the assassin and the pirate lord feels like it's a really good on its own story. Um, and I really like the character of Captain Rolf. Um, and I like that it's Selena and Sam's kind of relationship introduction. Um, they start off hating each other and then they're kind of forced into this situation where they have to really trust each other and Selena's not really sure how she feels about that. Um, and then it, you know, things play out. Uh, so I really like The Assassin and the Pirate Lord. Um, the second one, The, Assass the Assassin and the Healer, uh, is also pretty good. And the healer that you get introduced in in that story um, comes back later in the series. And I like that tie-in. I think when this came out, 
you hadn't been introduced to that character. And then I didn't even make the connection really when I was reading the story until, I don't know, something came up and, and, and it references that she, the, the healer, um, has met somebody and you realize that it's Selena. Um, and that's just also a really quick story. Selena's in this like little town for a couple nights and this healer is working in a bar there and they have an interaction and it's just kind of a glimpse into Selena's character after the events of the the first story um, and kind of how her mind is changing about the assassin world that she lives in. Um, so I like the, the assassin and the healer. That one was pretty good. Um, the assassin in the desert is probably the most detailed and um, I'd say even maybe even complete. And again, another character that's introduced in, in that story is later uh, mentioned in, in other parts of the, the story and further books down the line. Um, but I like, I like that whole world. I liked that you got to see a different part of this world. You got to see this desert area that it's, I think it's the red desert because it's all red sand. And there's a very different vibe to it than um, the rest of the Throne of Glass series. And so I liked getting introduced to that. I liked getting introduced to this other guild of assassins in that story. I thought that was really cool. Um, and I do kind of like that it's a moment where Selena has to be humbled. And uh, that's kind of the point of that story is like, she has to be brought down a couple pigs. Um, so that one was pretty good. And then I think The Assassin and the Underworld and The Assassin and the Empire are basically the same story. Um, I mean, they're, they're basically connected. And they're really almost like a prequel to Throne of Glass. And I don't think that they work so well on their own, but I think that they work really, really well for leading up to the events of Throne of Glass. And I really, really, really like the Assassin and the Empire and the end of that and how it leads into what you know is going to be coming in Throne of Glass. And there are a couple of moments in that that I think are really moving. And so I really like the collection. I recognize that like not everybody's a big Sarah J Mass fan, so obviously if you're not a fan of hers, then don't read this. If you're a fan of the series, I don't really know why you wouldn't pick it up. I don't think it's necessary to read in order to appreciate all of the other stories, but my review of this when it first when I first read it was that this was what made me fall in love with Selena. I really didn't like Selena in the first couple of books, and then I read this and I went, oh, I kind of get it now. And it humanizes her and it shows her all of her flaws and also explains a lot of the things that she does later in the series, like why she does those things. And so I like it. I think that it adds to her character. Like I said, it introduces some characters that will become important later in the series. And so I think it's interesting and good to look at from that perspective, like, oh, hey, we get to kind of get a taste of where these characters are coming from and why they were, why they might be important to the story later on. Um, so yeah, I think if you're going to be reading this series, you might as well be reading this set of, of short stories. Um, but obviously, like I said, not necessary if you just want to read the Throne of Glass books. I recognize that there are a lot of them as well. So I understand that it's like uh, another book that's like 500 pages. Do I want to add that to my reading list? Well, if you want to get more in touch with some of the characters, I think it's a really good uh, way to do that. Uh, but I gave it five out of five stars the first time and I gave it five out of five stars the second time I read it. So that's it. That's all for this video. Um, I am going to be rereading all the books and I think I will try to do a review for each of them. So if that sounds like something that you're interested in, be sure to subscribe because I will be posting those in the next few months. Um, and like I said, I'll leave the link in the description for the fan page that's doing the read along. Uh, I don't know if they're going to be doing anything they might be doing like Twitter sprints and things like that. Um, all those details will be in the link. 
And if you like what you're seeing, give the video a thumbs up. And comment down below on what your thoughts are for the Assassin's Blade or any of the Throne of Glass books. Because, like I said, I'm going to be talking about them. I've already read them up to this point. So, uh, yeah, we could talk about it. It'd be great. And I'll see you next time. Bye.